story time of how my stepmom got so jealous of me and my dad's bond that she plotted to kill me. So I never really liked my stepmom in the first place because she was a little controlling over my dad. And I just knew that she hated me and I really hated her too. But you know, my dad was in love and he seemed happy so I didn't really say anything. And my dad would always take me to lunch on Saturdays and Sundays. And we'd have like a dad-daughter bonding day, I guess. And me and my dad were just super close. And every single weekend, me going to lunch with him would start an argument between them two because she said I was taking time away from them too. My dad really never chose sides, but I never really got involved in the relationship as much as I hated her because I just loved seeing my dad happy. Also, at this time, I was 15. And what I'm about to say next might sound just a little crazy and unbelievable, but I'm not sure who she was on the phone with. But while on the phone with somebody, she was talking about getting rid of me. Mind you, my mom had passed away when I was younger, and I really had no other family to go to. Now, this is where the story takes a turn for the worse and she tries to get rid of me. I'm running out of time like for the crazy part too. <laughs> Part two of how my stepmom got so jealous of me and my dad's bond that she plotted to kill me. Continuing with the story, I don't know who she was on the phone with, but I overheard her on the phone saying that she was going to get rid of me. And honestly, I didn't really care and I didn't really think anything of it because I knew she was crazy, but I didn't think she was that crazy. So all of a sudden, she started making me breakfast. And I'm not a breakfast person. I can't eat right when I get up. So every time she would make me breakfast, I'd be like, thanks, but I'm not hungry. And she would get so mad. Like, so freaking mad. I'm not going to get into all the little details, but come to find out, she was putting rat poison in my food. She had set up cameras in my room. And I don't know what kind of sense this makes. I think she's just crazy, but she started to hide snakes in my room and claim it was my fault that the snakes were coming in my room. Yeah, doesn't really make any sense. Once I told my dad and my dad got out of his little in love stage with her, he finally stepped up and said something to her. And she admitted that she wanted me dead. He eventually called the cops, and to this day, she is in jail for attempted murder. Oh, did I forget to mention the day that he broke up with her, she tried to stab me in the throat. So yesterday, I was really bored, so I just decided that I would drive around my neighborhood. So I got in my car, I was warming it up, whatever, and I see my neighbor staring at me through their window. So I'm like, is this dude really about to say something? So I just ignore him, I'm like, do whatever you want to do, I don't care. And I pull out of my driveway, and I drive off. Two seconds later, I see my neighbor's car following me. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe they're just leaving the neighborhood. Maybe they're going to the store or something. <laughs> Maybe they're not even following me. So I take a left, they take a left. I take another left, they take another left. To the point where I make a whole circle and they keep following me. So I did two more circles around the neighborhood. Still were following me. Up until I pulled into my driveway and they sped off. I love having nosy neighbors. This is why you should be careful working in food delivery. When the pandemic hit, I lost my job and signed up to work for a food delivery app. I was making good money and the tips were nice too. During the first few months of working, I never had any weird experiences or customers. For the most part, everything was fine. There were times when I was a little scared of dropping off the food because it was in sketchy neighborhoods or it was dark outside, but nothing ever happened. I started feeling confident in my position and I let my guard down. One night, I got a delivery request and the tip was bigger than the total order. When I looked at the details of how to drop it off, I realized why the tip was so big. The instructions asked if I could open the door and bring it inside of the house as they were bedbound and unable to walk to the door. I knew I shouldn't do it. It was super against company policy, but I had an aunt who was bedbound and it hit a soft spot. When I opened the door of the house, I was hit with the most vile stench that's ever hit my nose. I looked around and called out to the customer. It was silent for a few seconds. Suddenly, someone croaked out, I'm back here, come on down. The voice came from a bedroom down the hallway that was pitch black. As I walked towards the room, my stomach was turning. I entered the room and put the order down, but I didn't see anyone. When I turned around to leave, suddenly a man appeared in front of me. Part 2 Why You Should Be Careful Working in Food Delivery This man was tall, wore glasses, and was balding. He was also fully functional from what I could tell. In this moment, I realized how badly I had messed up. I was cornered away from the doorway. He thanked me for dropping off his order. I politely replied, you're welcome, and tried to step around him to leave. He took a step in the same direction at the same exact moment and asked me what I was up to for the rest of the night. My heart was pounding out of my chest, but I quickly replied that I had another order to drop off and that they were waiting, so I had to go. However, he didn't move. Somehow, I mustered up enough courage to step towards him and say, excuse me, I really have to go. His hand was on the door and I knew he was either going to let me go or shut it and attack me. He stared at me for a moment, then hesitated and stepped out of the way. I quickly slipped past him and made a beeline for the front door. As I twisted the doorknob, I heard his footsteps running towards me. I swiftly opened the door, slammed it behind me, and sprinted towards my car. I felt the adrenaline rushing through my veins. I looked back to see if he was running after me, but he was just standing in the doorway, watching me run away with a smirk on his face. I never should have gone inside for a delivery and I never will again. Here's a story time of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. So my mom and her boyfriend were just going to go out and have a night to themselves, and I was home watching my two little sisters. At the time, I was 13, my two little sisters were 9 and 6. 
So around 6 p.m., my mom and her boyfriend leave. Me and my sisters just sit down and watch a movie, and then I get up to make them dinner. I get paranoid really easily, and while I was making them dinner, I look out the kitchen window, and I thought I seen somebody in the backyard. I text my mom, and she gets on the cameras that are outside, and she said nobody was out there. I continue making them dinner, we sit down and eat, and then we start watching another movie. Then we start hearing knocking. It wasn't coming from any of the doors, it was coming from the side of the house. I didn't want to bother my mom on her one night out, so I just took the kids, and we went upstairs and watched a movie in my room. My six-year-old sister at the time went to the bathroom and she came back in literal tears. She was literally crying so hard until I finally got her to stop and tell me what was wrong. She said as she was walking back from the bathroom, she seen somebody downstairs. I quietly locked my door and I put my sisters in the closet and I called my mom right away. I'm running out of time, like for part two. Part two of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. I called my mom and then she looked on the cameras downstairs and somebody was in the house. She never told me what the person was doing. I guess she just didn't want me worrying, but she called 911 right away. While my two little sisters were in the closet, my six-year-old sister would not stop crying and I'm pretty sure the person downstairs heard her. At this time, my mom and her boyfriend were already on the way and so were the police. I heard him coming up the steps, so I quietly opened the closet door and promised my sisters that they would stay quiet and be calm no matter what. I didn't know what he was here for, so I hid in the side of the bed in front of the closet so that he would get to me before he got to the girls. I heard him just rummaging through stuff and stuff breaking. Then a couple minutes later, I hear the police sirens. Right as I hear the police sirens, I hear a bedroom window smash. While trying to stay as calm as I can, three policemen bust down the door. They grab me and my sisters and take us outside. About five minutes after they take us outside and put us in the back of their car, my mom and her boyfriend shows up. About $10,000 of our stuff was either missing or broke. Then about a month later, when we were capable to, we did move. Nothing has happened since.